The top stories, charity organizations helping improve socioeconomic conditions of people. Ethiopian diaspora in Kuwait by over 3 million USD worth bonds to date. And former international football star George Weha elected as Liberia's president. Hello and welcome to ABC News. I'm on the main angle. President Mulatu Tashoma commends charity organizations in Ethiopia for improving socioeconomic conditions of the community. Consortium of Christian Relief and Development Associations has on Thursday awarded 10 best performing charity organizations at an event on its premises in Addis Ababa. Tababirda reports. Habtam is a volunteer at Kulit Youth Reproductive Health and Development Organization. He had been a serious drug addict for years before he joined the NGO and got rehabilitated. My conditions was critical. I used to chew chat, drink alcohol, and consume drugs, including marijuana, on a daily basis for about 11 years. I was even forced to live on the streets. But after joining this organization, I have gradually managed to avoid all the addiction. At his fifth annual Good Practice Competition Forum, Consortium of Christian Relief and Development Associations has recognized 10 NGOs and CSOs, including college, for their achievements in health, education, and social welfare. It is meant uh, to recognize the contribution that NGOs are making towards the regional and uh, federal development. Uh, it is also meant uh, to, uh, to appreciate the best uh, performing uh, NGOs uh, in their respective areas of engagement. In his address at the ceremony, President Mulatu has lauded the role of charity organizations in improving the lives of the community across the nation. Charities operating in Ethiopia are making significant contributions in the multifaceted national and regional efforts of transforming the socio-economic conditions of our people. The president has called on all charity organizations in Ethiopia to carry out their activities in line with the government policies and strategies. Back to Habtamu, he is now helping others in Addis Ababa to come out of addiction and related disorders. As I have been addicted myself, I know how to approach those in similar conditions. Together with my colleagues, I have been able to save many youngsters. I am now married and a father of two. This by itself inspires money to win their battle against addiction. CCRDA, a concertium of 400 humanitarian organizations, has been serving Ethiopians for over 40 years. Various media houses complain of government institutions reluctant to provide accurate and quick information. In a consultative meeting organized by the Ethiopian Institute of the Ombudsman, participants said public relations experts do not value citizens' rights to information. The participants added that access to information is being denied, delayed, and in some cases, inaccurate and exaggerated information are being provided. The Ombudsman, however, calls for collaborative effort to build better understanding and solve the issue. We witness cases of some media being favored because they do have good connections with public relations experts. On the contrary, others are denied of information as a result of their investigative story against the institution. These sites get penalized by delayed or outdated information. Institutions make things inconvenience up to the journalists opt to drop the story. If there is any case of an institution denying the right to access to information, the denied could come to the Ombudsman. We are there to verify the case, whether the information is confidential, classified or just denied with no reason. After we pass our judgment, the case could be taken to court this evening. According to the proclamation, these procedures are intended to widen the pursuit of information. 
Scholars suggest the government to be determined to prevent the danger threatening Lake Tana. Water hyacinth is engulfing the lake, which is known for its unique ecological biosphere reserve. Sarat Mohamed Sani has more. Bagashao has been fishing on Lake Tana for the last 38 years. Over those years, he has witnessed the changes happening to the lake. The water volume is immensely decreasing. From Bahadar to Gorgora, it used to be 95 kilometers long across the lake. Now, this has been reduced to 75 kilometers. The water is retreating from where it used to be. To make it worse, he insists in where is the lake. Scholars stress that the problem is alarming and it is a combination of different factors. The main problem is siltation carried by rivers, plus the pollution of water coming from urban centers and the way we use water are other factors. Five years now, water high synth is spreading all over the lake. Ayali warns that if not handled properly, the problem Tana is facing would affect millions. To save Tana, the government needs to act in an organized way, according to Dr. Ayali. The government needs to be determined more than any time before to save the lake. For instance, there are responsible bodies for overgrazing and waste and sewage mismanagement. The government should coordinate these structures. The main job can be done by the public. We need to mobilize and aware them, though. As a government structure, we know that following up the proper implementation of policies and legal frameworks regarding pollution and waste management is vital. It is to be recalled that in June 2015, UNESCO has registered Lake Tana as a World Heritage Site for its unique ecological biosphere reserve. Ethiopian diaspora in Kuwait by over 3 million USD worth grant Renaissance Dam bonds to date. The diaspora expresses commitment to keep on continuing share for Ethiopia's developmental endeavors. Selesha Demiso has the details. Abiyo Tabara is an Ethiopian diaspora in Kuwait. She has named a restaurant after the river Abai, meaning the Blue Nile. The designation came as a business launch coincided with the annual celebration of the commencement of construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Where I named my restaurant after my birth place, my mother or my name, I would not be satisfied. I am happily supporting the construction of the Grand Dam project happening on the River Nile. Living in Kuwait for 12 years now, Abiyo started restaurant business saving money from her low-paying jobs. She says that she's committed to continue buying the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam bonds. Today, I have bought bonds worth 500 USD. Buying such bonds, of course, is a kind of saving your money at banks. In previous times, I bought similar bonds after the names of my children as well. I keep on buying until the completion of the project. The other Ethiopian diaspora in Kuwait, Berge and Derge, has also bought a 50,000 USD worth bonds, postponing her plan of constructing a house. I prioritized buying bonds as I have promised not to build a house before the completion of the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. I don't have a permanent job, but as I love my country above all other things, I am contributing share for its development. The Ethiopian embassy in Kuwait is mobilizing the diaspora to sustain its support for national development projects, including the Grand Dam. <laughs> Ethiopian diaspora in Kuwait have bought bonds worth 3.2 million USDs since the project's commencement. Mobilization works are underway for the diaspora to buy more bonds, along with supporting other developmental endeavors in Ethiopia. As part of cementing diaspora unity, Ethiopian Week is due to be celebrated in Kuwait soon, the embassy announced. In another account, Ethiopian ambassador to Egypt, Tayyaz Kasselasi, said negotiation between Ethiopia and Egypt on the Grand Renaissance Dam is still going on. 
There had been ups and downs in the negotiations conducted in 2017 on the basis of the declaration between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt, Taye told the Cairo-based Al Haram Weekly. However, the ambassador said the process didn't fail. It is still on and the leaders cannot afford the talks to fail. But Taye insisted that it is the job of the technical teams to come up with concrete ideas rather than to throw the ball into the court of the political leadership. The ambassador also rejected accusations by Cairo that Ethiopia is buying time while it continues the construction of the dam. He made it bold that it is not at all the intention of Ethiopia to cause harm to Egypt's water interests given that the dam would be used to generate power, nothing else. Ethiopian ambassador to Turkey, uh, Ayalio Govezi, uh, describes the relationship between Ethiopia and Turkey as excellent. Ethiopia and Turkey have had more than 100 years of bilateral relations. Today, the ties between our two countries can be described as excellent, both politically and economically, Ayalio told Anadolu Agency. The ambassador said the construction of a 386-kilometer railway by a Turkish company is a proof for the growing cooperation between the two. More than 100 Turkish companies are doing business in Ethiopia and have created more than 10,000 jobs, Ayalio said. In the meantime, Ambassador Ayalio has called on Turkish businesses to vastly engage in Ethiopia's manufacturing and construction sectors. Ethiopia is said to have performed well in coffee export in the first quarter of 2017. Apart from its lion's share in the national economy, cultural coffee business is getting accustomed across Ethiopian cities and towns. Jerusalem Beza has the details. Along with its uniquely treasured ceremony, coffee is everything for Ethiopian households. Coffee is everything for the Ethiopian. Uh, I think um, almost, almost more than 20 million of Ethiopians directly or indirectly related with this uh, industry. And also is the basic livelihood for this uh, farmers of Ethiopia, especially those growing. From near past, cultural coffee business is becoming widely accustomed across Ethiopian cities and towns. <laughs> I sell coffee since the last three years. I bring the coffee bean from different parts of Ethiopia. Earlier, I was jobless. Now, though, I can manage my life through the income of this business. I serve about 500 people per day. Most importantly, coffee is the backbone of Ethiopia's economy. It contributes about 30% share in the country's foreign currency earnings. Ethiopian Coffee and Tea Development and Marketing Authority says the nation performed well in coffee export in the first quarter of 2017. When we compare to, to this achievement uh, uh, to the last year, similar months, we exceed 16% in terms of quantity. Again, we have uh, exceed our income by 90%. Our quarterly performance is better compared with last year's same period. We have tried to export quality coffee. We have participated in exhibitions to promote our coffee. The new coffee tracing system has also contributed for the success. Ethiopian Coffee and Tea Development and Marketing Authority says it's implementing various reforms to make the nation competitive on the international market. Federal Cooperatives Agency says unions have been playing a vital role in facilitating market linkage for farmers. Coffee farmers in Benchmaji zone of the southern Ethiopia state speak of the support they get from unions. Bezao Tiyuel has more. Ayale Wasfaw is coffee farmer in Benchmaji zone. He says farmers are getting expertise support to keep the quality of coffee for a better price. Experts show us how to grow coffee even starting from planting. 
along with our traditional knowledge. Their scientific support is helping us to be productive. Bench Majizon is one of the best coffee growing places in Ethiopia. It fetches 17,000 tons of coffee per year. However, coffee farmers in the zone face challenges to get market access to sell their coffee. That is why they are organized under a union. Previously, we didn't know about the price of coffee in the market. But after we got organized under a union, we become able to decide our coffee price based on the market. And we are working hard to be competent by providing quality coffee to the market. Now we have seen progress in our work. We make use of farming technologies to produce quality coffee in big amount. We also participate in exhibitions to promote our coffee and assess the current market price. Federal Cooperatives Agency says unions in Ethiopia have been playing a vital role in creating market linkage for farmers. Unions in Ethiopia are working to scale up productivity of farmers. They have been doing much in disseminating technology and creating market access. Particularly, unions are working by focusing on offering quality coffee for international markets. In Ethiopia, there are 381 unions embracing 17 million members. The Japanese casual wear manufacturer Uniqlo is opening its first African manufacturing plant in Ethiopia. Uniqlo opens its plant in Ethiopia hoping to create an export hub to the U.S. and European markets. Uniqlo considers Ethiopia's geographical proximity to Europe as a key factor to grow its market. The plant announced that it aims to begin test production of t-shirts and other products earlier in 2018. More products would join the mix if the plant could handle the volume and meet quality standards. Football legend George Weha is elected as the new president of Liberia, the West African country. Weha is well ahead of opponent Joseph Bukayi with more than 60% of the vote. As news of Weha's victory emerged, his supporters began celebrating in the capital, Monrovia. He will succeed Alan Johnson Sirleaf, Africa's first female president in Liberia's first democratic handover in decades. After the results were announced, George Weha wrote on his Twitter account that he deeply feels the emotion of the nation. We'll bring you the latest about Weha's victory in our evening news bulletin. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.